being an explorationist, I will make uh, some forward-looking statements, of course. Uh, you'd be disappointed if I didn't. Uh, so Serengeti is a BC-focused uh, copper-gold explorer, and it's really it's a two-part story. The Quinica uh, projects an advanced uh, porphyry copper-gold uh, deposit, which is advanced resource uh, PFS stage project. And that's backed up by a very large portfolio of ex exploration properties, about 95,000 hectares, uh, with a, a whole series of, of uh, bets that uh, run the gamut from early stage, really early stage exploration to, uh, to drill ready targets, potentially representing the next discovery. And I should say that we own a significant uh, a piece of this company, uh, just under 10% owned by uh, current management. So what is, uh, what is Serengeti? Well, we're a BC Copper Gold Explorer, Quinica, that we own currently own a 65% interest in, and we are sole funding that program this year, turning the focus back towards exploration, uh, and we'll, we'll own 67% uh, of that project, so kind of through a critical, suffice to say, it's going to clean up the, the agreement. We're quite pleased uh, to be sole funding that program because we see... Uh, some real, uh, some real upside there, and then this whole portfolio of exploration uh, properties. Current uh, uh, capitalization: 109 million shares issued, and outstanding, just under 120 fully diluted. Uh, we did uh, at the uh, uh, in in December uh, close a, a flow-through financing, and just last week a hard dollar financing and I would say also benefited from the recovery of a significant mineral exploration tax credit back from uh, the BC government, CRA. So we're in a, in a much, much stronger position than we would have been six months ago if you'd said to me that we we're going to be able to raise two and a half million dollars uh, you know, in the space of a month. Uh, six months ago, I, I would have said, well, you're crazy, but clearly we've had a, a turn in the market and, and we're, in, uh, we're in good shape at this point with about 2.6 million in, uh, in cash. So where are we located? Well, we're, you've, you've heard quite a lot about uh, British Columbia and um, we're in the northern end of the Quinell Troth. So we're in a part of the province where if you're successful, you can develop something without having uh, a, a B in the dollars in, in front of your development capital. Um, so, northern end of the, the Quinell Troth between the Mount Milligan uh, mine and the uh, Kames uh, redevelopment project, both owned by uh, Centera Gold. And that um, gold endowment of these uh, BC porphyries is, is not being lost on the, on the majors. Uh, really, over the last couple of years, we, we've had the entry of some of the really the big, uh, the big gold companies, and, and now more recently, uh, Australian companies, of course, with Newcrest coming in and advancing the Redcrest project. So, a little bit about the Quinica project. There's the the land, the land package. It uh, represents uh, a, not a at this point a huge uh, system, a copper gold system, but it's it. What's unique about it? is it has a, a copper enrichment zone with some really exceptional values and uh, contains some zones of, uh, of really, uh, really good grade. And we see uh, the possibility to expand the resource incrementally, make some near, um, near deposit discoveries on some targets we have, uh, and, and then uh, some engineering opportunities, one in particular that I will, uh, will get into. So there's uh, the drilling highlights from our 2018 program. There's um, some, some pretty long intercepts there, half, uh, half a kilometer, 500 meter plus intercepts of, of good grade copper gold, 0.5, 0.6% copper, uh, up to, uh, to 0.8 grams uh, gold over very long widths. The purple shape there is, a, a potent, is an open pit, planned open pit. And the, the red uh, rectangular block beneath it is a block cave. Uh, so it's a combination open pit block cave. And we'll look at a couple of sections uh, here uh, in, in a couple of minutes. So there, those uh, drill holes, of course, 
uh, play into a, a mineral resource that we updated uh, uh, just, uh, well, just about a year ago, March 2019. There's uh, about 220 million tons there in the M&I category, uh, based on 190 drill holes, um, about 80,000 meters of drilling. There's about a 1.8 million ounce uh, gold uh, resource, 1.3 billion pound uh, copper resource. That's the resource table on the, uh, the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is a sensitivity analysis that shows a significant tonnage of, uh, of substantially higher grade. And it's that higher grade zone that we have uh, focused our engineering and, and uh, um, uh, work in terms of a potential development so, and you, you can see there, again, a combination uh, open pit and uh, an underground uh, resource. So, stepping back from the known and looking out uh, at Brownfield's opportunities right through, um, so near deposit Brownfield opportunities for incremental resource expansion, additional discovery potential, out to uh, far field or green field exploration targets as far away as 20, 25 kilometers away that we think can be incremental uh, to, uh, to uh, tons and grade and potential value at Quinica. We'll be pursuing all of these uh, opportunities this year on the exploration side. And then uh, uh, touching on one um, uh, mineral, I have to call it mineral sorting here because the um, uh, IROC won't let us uh, let us call that ore sorting. Probably Tomra is not very happy about that. But uh, anyway, it's mineral sorting, which shows the potential to uh, to do a, an upgrading step, so you can mine more, mill less, and that has a really positive uh, uh, potential economic implications. So we'll look at some of the exploration opportunities, and then a quick slide on on this uh, ore sorting. So what's the central zone um, west deep is um, uh, what you may be able to see there in the near surface. Of course, the hot colors are the, the high grade. Um, the, it's basically we're at the northern edge of the interior uh, plateau here in, in BC. So we're in a flat terrain there. So the, the surface is, is that flat line. Um, open pit, you can see both the initial open pit and ultimate open pit, and then beneath that, a pipe-like body of higher grade. Now that at depth, uh, towards uh, the bottom of that, so below about 500 meters, very, very sparsely drilled. And so we see an opportunity there with additional drilling to bring what is now an inferred resource into indicated, so then be able to consider it in a potential mine plan. But as importantly, uh, and this is something that's particular to this resource, as we put more holes into this resource, we tend to increase the grade. I'm not sure entirely why that is, but that's, that is what we've seen historically. So we plan this year to put uh, at least two holes at depth into this system and, and basically test for um, uh, stacked systems, which if we can bring that into a resource, will we'll, uh, improve the capital utilization of a mine development project. So same development footprint, more tons, better economics. So that's incremental. Uh, one of the, um, uh, there's a the potential game changer and that's in that hot color there off to the, uh, to the north. Yeah, there, so there's the, the, known, uh, the known resource that we've developed a mine plan on. About 600 meters to the north, uh, we drilled, um, we think a near miss in 2016. At a very broad intercept of, of anomalous gold that is uh, similar to what we see around the heart of the deposit in a shell around the heart of the deposit. So that uh, we plan to test this year with a deeper hole drilling uh, below that hole 178 that had this broad interval of anomalous gold. So on the engineering side of things, here's this mineral sorting opportunity. Uh, some initial test work we did with XRT, which is like an atomic mass detector and uh, laser sensing shows that we can detect the, high, the more dense material, of course, has sulfides and the, the copper and the gold related to it. But interestingly, laser picks out 
the quartz veins, which are also uh, um, more mineralized and hence do a pre-concentration uh, potentially with, with um, mineral sorting of, of some sort. This early test works encouraged us to do a more substantial program this year and of course the advantage there uh, is, is mine more, mill less and um, again improve your economics. And I should say this is being used uh, at, at uh, New Afton, New Gold and, and I know it's being seriously looked at by Newcrest for, for Redcrest. So this is pretty new technology that uh, potentially is a game changer for the, the mining and milling business. So that's, that's, uh, that's Quinica on the exploration side. Uh, East Niv, RJ, Goldway, Croy Bloom, and Topcat. Top three are all drill ready. And the, the bottom one there is a particularly uh, uh, a really interesting uh, early stage bet with some, some pretty interesting copper and palladium uh, numbers actually. And, and the palladium's not a bad thing to find these days. So we'll look at a slide or two from each one of those exploration bets. So East Niv is about uh, 30 kilometers southwest of the Kamas mine. Uh, it is at this point uh, helicopter access, but it's only 25 kilometers off the Kamas Hall Road, and with success, you could imagine building a road in there in a valley bottom. So there's three targets here at, at East Niv, and um, uh, well, we'll just look at some pictures rather than words. Uh, this is a magnetic image. We've got a substantial uh, property there now, about 64 square kilometers. That northwest trending blue line is a magnetic feature which m maps out a very large structure, which is, in fact, is the same structure that Quinica lies along about 160 kilometers to the southeast. Uh, our work last year identified three targets here, and I will just, I'll show you an image of, uh, of target A. There's a, a picture is uh, worth a thousand words. This um, is a, a brand new prospect of uh, porphyry, um, copper gold style mineralization with uh, ore, ore grade values outcropping its surface that nobody uh, had ever uh, walked on or seen before, near as we can tell. So 0.8% copper and a gram of gold in, um, uh, in a, a potassically altered zone that I'll, I'll just point out here. Uh, in, in this area in here, uh, there's a big phyllic zone. Uh, you walk down through, uh, and as geology speak here, phyllic zone through propylitic zone, down into the potassic zone, and, uh, and that's K, K feldspar magnetite calcopyrite with gold. This looks a lot like, um, like the mines in the area, Kamas, for instance. So we'll do some geophysics here. Uh, there is a, a bit of IP being done here previously uh, that shows a sulfide system, not on this target, but one on the valley bottom. We'll do some geophysics and, um, and plan to drill one th this year. This prospect I'm, I'm really quite excited about. Um, RJ Goldway is just off the Kamas uh, Hall Road, so the same general area. Um, uh, very interesting um, high-grade veins here, copper, tremendous silver numbers, if you can read those silver numbers. Now look at those silver numbers, and I think we should talk to Eric Sprott about this one. Um, these kind of silver numbers he would like. Uh, those high-grade veins are interesting, but our, our soil geochemistry shows a substantial uh, copper uh, moly signature. Uh, and then a line of geophysics shows a big sulfide system. So we've got all the elements there of a, um, uh, a good, really good porphyry copper, uh, copper moly, copper moly, silver gold uh, target. This one again is, uh, is drill ready. It's got another target out in the valley bottom actually with an equally attractive target but completely covered. So Croy Bloom, uh, touch on, uh, well, I think I'll skip over that one in the interest of getting to, to a key one, but Croy Bloom is, uh, we've got three, three targets there. Um, some, yes, some tough topography, so some tough drilling, uh, but really interesting targets. Uh, big, big geophysical signature below some shallow holes from the late 90s with pretty interesting copper gold. Uh, uh, numbers in them. So what we, we try to do is take advantage of data, put the story together, uh, do some conceptual thinking and deep penetrating geophysics, and that's yielded uh, a very interesting looking drill target on Croy Bloom. 
But uh, Tomcat is, is one I'd like to, to uh, dwell on here for, for a minute. It's a, uh, an option property. It's one of our earlier stage, uh, uh, earliest stage significant properties, I would say. It's a, a, an option to acquire 100% interest from a group of prospectors in a, a 30,000 30, hectare uh, property package adjacent to the Lorraine deposit that's owned by Tech and Sun Metals. And I'll, I'll just touch on, on two, uh, two targets here. One that, that I find particularly exciting, uh, that is this Nova target, and then we'll touch on, uh, on Cat Mountain. So Nova is, is, is pretty interesting. We call it Nova PGEs, and we're not sure whether it's a SCARN or uh, it, it previously been called a peroxonite. We've done some petrographic work, and we see that it's a, it's a, it's a rock. Uh, it's a strange alkalic rock uh, that's got a lot of magnetite in it. It's got some apatite in it, and it's got pretty interesting copper, palladium, uh, uh, some gold values, a little bit of platinum, and some silver. It bears some similarity to the Marathon a copper gold mine in Ontario, and somebody suggested to me this morning uh, Palabora, and I, I like that analogy. Uh, this is a, a heck of an interesting target with some geophysics here, uh, because there's never been any done. We could very quickly have a, a terrific drill target. So one other property, which is at the other end, or sorry, target on that same property, other end of the spectrum. Uh, 10,000 meters of drilling done over 30 years. Nobody had ever developed a 3D model on it. We've done that, generated an open direction. We can see down a long strike down plunge and even a faulted offset of that system, we think, nearby. So that's, uh, that's the Serengeti opportunity. Backstop by the Quinica uh, deposit, a bunch of great exploration bets. And we'd love to tell you more about it. Just come by and see us at booth 1100 just around the corner here. Thank you.